So these are the last set of kind of the Spanish colonial inspired works that I've been working on for the last 15 years. And they're going to a Revolution Gallery in New York, I think in Buffalo. I've been kind of moving away from this kind of work and going more into a way that I was working when I just got out of art school in 2000. And so what I've been doing is transitioning from like these wooden panels and I've extracted out the, the figures and anything that kind of is religious referencing to the Spanish colonial stuff and kind of moving to, you know, the, these kind of works here, which these are just kind of like little sketch studies. I find them similar to what I have been doing with the Spanish colonial things but there's just there's no figures in them so all the action and movement is reliant on you know pieces of wood and nails and a pipe which is being smoked somehow and there's an eyeball which is crying which is making the you know filling up the ocean but they're really about isolation so I started doing these in 2019 I sort of worked um, worked on these kind of works which I was just trying to get back into the the feeling of paint because a lot of the Spanish colonial works were really refined paintings there are a lot of layers and very controlled brushwork whereas these are a lot more loose and I mean the color rhythms are kind of out of whack for me so it's really about experimentation you know the, these are more kind of formally fun for me and you know it's kind of easy to paint them on and scrape them off or wipe them off and just keep going so these kind of limited drawings or preparatory drawings needed then all the planning that i do for those kind of spanish colonial kind of works these i just start painting and finish when they feel finished so i do kind of you know sort of rough more you know looser sketches just in acrylic and work out what I want, you know, what sort of scale I want the island and where I want the wood. And the wood's kind of built up using Kazimir Malevich suprematist paintings, which were done just over a hundred years ago. And they were kind of like a, one of the main pushes towards abstraction. So in a way, I'm, I really am moving away from, you know, the, the more kind of figurative narrative stuff and really trying to resolve or find a balance between the two, between figuration and the formal elements of paint or the plastic elements of paint. These are just um, some larger works that I've started working on and this is how they're kind of built up. I haven't got any finished ones to show you but uh, you know it, it's sort of pushing in these forms into the paint. That's kind of the only way I can explain how I'm doing it. So you can see in this one here, um, it's, it's just thin paint put over the whole surface and then uh, I start just by the, you know, using a drawing. And this one references a painting over there, which uh, has the, the black pipe. So I draw it out and then I start painting it and when I start, blocking in these forms then I start to define where the images go and I'll just keep painting over and over it until I kind of get where I want it to go and again it's the the island motif I come from an island Aotearoa New Zealand I guess when I started doing these I wasn't kind of it wasn't during the pandemic or anything it was a, a year before but I was looking at the phenomenon of social isolation and that's mostly what social media has done to us. So it was more kind of that concept as opposed to pandemic isolation. But it has really grown into that just, just by par of course, really. I've done a lot of work on paper 
which I don't normally do, but I've just glued that down onto board so that it, you know, it sort of holds up a bit more. So you can kind of get to see the, the viscosity of paint and the, the application of paint and how quick it is. And, you know, there's a lot of references to artists that I like, like Gustin, Philip Gustin was a major influence at art school. And I've kind of gone back to that to kind of really have some more fun with paint and, and kind of find forms in paint as opposed to dictating the forms and really kind of crowbarring the narrative in there. So this is a, this is a lot more interesting to me at, at this present time. I don't know where it's going to go to, but I kind of feel like, you know, this has got a lot more excitement for me making the work. So what I've done is I've transferred this square format over to the slender rectangular format, which I don't know why I did that, because I like what's happening with the square format, but maybe it's just a, a comfort thing that, you know, the, the vertical format's been working for me better. But at some point I want to resolve the square format. And uh, yeah, this is just one of the earlier studies in monochrome, which helped me kind of formulate what colours I'm going to use by not dictating too much, like not transferring a drawing to the painting. So there's more fun and experimentation in the actual painting. And uh, these little ones are kind of fun too because they're quick and again they, they just allow me to, to resolve things really quickly as opposed to you know spending a couple of days working on the the, the bigger ones. And this is one from 2015, so that's a, a copy of a Milajevich, Kazimir Milajevich painting that I've just turned into the pieces of wood and the nails. So that, that's where this all started from, you know, five years ago. So these are a group of paintings from Mexico that I've collected over the years. What are commonly termed retablo paintings from Mexico and Spain. Uh, I think they're called laminas, which is you know, tin, laminas pinturas in Mexico. And they're all different saints that you would have painted by an artisan or an artist in the village in Mexico and you take them to your church and hang them on the wall and um, pay homage to the saint and to Christ. So yeah, the, and there's all different variations, whether it's um, like an ex voto painting, which is a specific dedication, or the more general um, saint or Christ figures, um, like the this one's the mystic vintage where it's Christ's blood becoming wine <laughs> for the Eucharist. So these are two paintings that I did back in New Zealand. Interestingly enough, they're, they're kind of both reference the United States. So the one at the top is looking at different kind of men's groups and things that are now kind of seen as conspiratorial groups and kind of using symbols that relate to that. Uh, the one, this one at the bottom is a take on Holbin's ambassadors in the National Gallery in London. But it, it journeys a, a trip that I took around the United States in 2008 and, you know, things related to race and culture and class and racism, latent racism, and, and kind of trying to deal with that halfway around the world in New Zealand. Where in the Holbin, there's normally a skull, an anamorphic skull. I put in Huey Newton because I was reading uh, Eldridge Cleaver's Soul on Ice when I, was, when I did the trip around the States. So that kind of helped me you know, understand a bit more about 
you know, aspects of American culture which you don't get through television or you know, the, the ubiquitous stuff, yeah.